Well, look, I, I, I'm not so sure that they uh, that demand is really strong. If we look at what happened, I, I don't disagree that there will be tough choices, Carl. I, I ultimately think at the end of the day, though, um, you know, companies are being valued uh, on the future and the future is electric vehicles. And so you've had companies like Ford say, we're going to get to two million electric vehicles by 2026. Um, you know, and I think, quite frankly, that's come hell or high water. Uh, yes, they lost two billion dollars in electric vehicles this year, but they made more than 10 billion in, in operating profit in their ICE businesses. So they can continue to subsidize that business. And, and the market is basically saying, so I'm not going to lie. This video will probably hurt to watch and it sure f***ing hurt to record. I'm really selling this one, aren't I? So if you're ready to claw your eyeballs out, days after Tesla published their master plan part three, it seems like a Wall Street stock analyst and a Tesla perma bear has finally discovered Tesla's original 2006 secret master plan. I guess Tesla did a good job keeping this one under wraps for more than a decade and a half. Now I wish I was joking. But I'm not. So, over to Captain Obvious explaining Tesla's 2006 master plan. Just making sure, yeah, it is in fact 2023 as I record this. It's only been 17 years. Over to you, Tony. This guest says Tesla will need to lower prices even more this year to hit volume targets. Bernstein analyst Tony Sakanagi joins us now with an underperform rating, $150 price target on Tesla. Tony, why? It, it, it doesn't look like they have much of a demand problem here. Uh, good morning, Sarah. Um, well, look, I, I, I'm not so sure that they uh, that demand is really strong. If we look at what happened, they cut prices materially in January up to 20 percent. And uh, sequential growth was four percent. The last couple of years, it was one and two percent. So you took these very large price cuts. Consumers reacted to them, I'm sure, strongly initially. And yet seasonal growth was pretty in line with historical levels. And as we look forward, uh, inventory grew, um, so they weren't able to sell everything that they made. Um, we, as Phil mentioned, we're going to have um, lower uh, incentives or lower credits from IRA, for sure, on the standard range Model 3, potentially on other models. We're waiting to, to hear uh, exactly what those credits will be. Um, and if we look at lead times for vehicles, other than the Model Y in the U.S., you can get a Tesla within two to four weeks pretty well anywhere in the world. So there isn't much backlog. As I mentioned, there are about 100,000 cars in the inventory right now. Um, and so it doesn't feel like demand is fantastic right now. And my guess is as we progress through the year and there's more and more competition, there are 150 new EVs launching in China alone this year, um, Tesla will likely have to lower prices to make sure it hits its volume targets. Tony's prediction that Tesla will continue to cut prices on their vehicles is correct. As I mentioned, they explained this 17 years ago. While Tony and many other Tesla bears fail to recognize either they don't understand or they're just being intellectually dishonest. And I think in Tony's case, it's probably the former. I just don't think the guy gets it. Per their 2006 master plan, there's two sides to this equation. There's lowering prices and there's lowering the cost to actually make these vehicles. Tesla is doing both. It's literally been on their fucking website since 2006. I can't recall a single instance where a Tesla bear has explained that Tesla will be cutting prices on their vehicles. I mean, duh, that's how you sell more, without also mentioning that Tesla has massively driven the cost to produce those vehicles down. I don't know why. Again, is it intellectual dishonesty or just stupidity? So I just want to take this opportunity to wind the clock back and actually read some excerpts from Tesla's 2006 secret master plan, which was so secret that apparently Wall Street's only just discovering it now. The secret Tesla Motors master plan, just between you and me. Published by Elon Musk, August 2nd, 2006. Before many people watching this video were born. As you know, the initial product of Tesla Motors is a high-performance electric sports car called the Tesla Roadster. Some readers may not be aware. <laughs> this is just too delicious. Some readers may not be aware, and spoiler alert, some Wall Street analysts 17 years later still may not be aware, of the fact that our long-term plan, wait for it, our long-term plan is to build a wide range of models, wait for it, including affordably priced family cars. One more time, affordably priced. One more time, affordably priced. Sorry to repeat myself, but affordably priced. Our long-term plan is to build affordably priced cars. Sorry for repeating myself so much, but uh, 
It's been on their fucking website for 17 years. This is because the overarching purpose of Tesla Motors and the reason I am funding the company is to help expedite the move from a mine and burn hydrocarbon economy towards a solar electric economy, which I believe to be the primary but not exclusive sustainable solution. But wait, there's more. Critical to making that happen is an electric car without compromises, which is why the Tesla Roadster is designed to beat a gasoline sports car like a Porsche or Ferrari in a head-to-head -head showdown. Then, over and above that fact, it has twice the energy efficiency of a Prius. Even so, some may question whether this actually does any good for the world. Are we really in need of another high-performance sports car? Will it actually make a difference to global carbon emissions? Well, the answers are no and not much. However, that misses the point. Uh-oh. Oh no. Missing the point. Oh god. Are you telling me? In Tesla's secret master plan, they also explained what missing the point of the secret master plan would be? That is correct. However, that misses the point. Unless you understand the secret master plan alluded to above. Ready? Almost any new technology initially has high unit cost before it can be optimized. And this is no less true for electric cars. The strategy of Tesla is to enter at the high end of the market where customers are prepared to pay a premium. Ready? And then drive down market as fast as possible to higher unit volume and wait for it, lower prices with each successive model. Oh my God, imagine that. What the f did people think was going to happen? 17 years. Hello, 17 years. The strategy of Tesla start at the high end and then drive down market as fast as possible. You guys have no idea how painful these videos are sometimes. People just don't seem to get it. Without giving away too much, I can say that the second model will be a sporty four-door family car at roughly half the $89,000 price point of the Tesla Roadster, and the third model will be even more affordable. In keeping with the fast-growing technology company, all free cash flow is plowed back into R&D to drive down the costs and ring. Oh, 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 how dare they? I'd just like to underscore this point, okay? Again, it's been on their website for 17 years, talking about driving costs down, making their vehicles more affordable, and explaining all free cash flow is plowed back into R&D to, wait for it, drive down the costs. It's important we understand this, because this is the part of the argument you never hear from the bears. Tesla's prices are going to come down. It's because their costs are coming down. This does my head in, okay? It's literally on their website. Their goal is to drive their costs down. Why would they drive their costs down? Refer to previous paragraphs. To make their vehicles more affordable so more people can afford them. This is the part of the argument you never hear from the bears. Tesla's going to have to cut prices again. The argument that the bears tend to make is therefore margins are going to collapse, therefore margins are going to zero, then eventually negative, because the only way they can sell more vehicles is to cut the price. But it's impossible to reduce the cost to make those vehicles, therefore you must lose margin. And bring the follow-on products to market as fast as possible. Now I don't want to distort what we heard from Tony. His point is true. Tesla will continue to cut prices on their vehicles, but he's failed to mention that they're also simultaneously reducing the cost to produce those vehicles. And also neglecting to mention that this has been on their website for almost two decades. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> week after week, month after month, quarter after quarter, and year after year, we will hear the exact same comments from Wall Street analysts covering Tesla stock. Tesla's gonna need to cut prices again to sell more vehicles. Again, refer to their master plan, published in 2006. We know. Yeah, your, your lead time uh, charts in your report today, Tony, are interesting. And you say that you think that the competition has deep pockets and are not going to back off. Uh, some auto analysts argue that it's that conflict between the ICE business and the EV business that's going to create really tough choices for legacy automakers. Why do you think that's not the case? I, I don't disagree that there will be tough choices, Carl. I, I ultimately think at the end of the day, though, um, you know, companies are being valued uh, on the future, and the future is electric vehicles. And so you've had companies like Ford say, we're going to get to 2 million electric vehicles by 2026. Um, you know, and I think, quite frankly, that's come hell or high water. Uh, yes, they lost $2 billion in electric vehicles this year, but they made more than $10 billion in, in operating profit in their ICE businesses. So they can continue to subsidize that business. And, and the market is basically saying, Oh, man. I feel so bad for Tony. He's got to be the dumbest smart guy on Wall Street. He means well. He's just absolutely clueless. I'd love to know. Maybe somebody has seen the research from Bernstein. I'm sure they do do the research. How many electric vehicles are they expecting to be sold in, let's say, 2026 and 2030? In fact, here's a better question. How many ICE vehicles are they expecting to be sold globally in 2026 or 2030? I've got a funny feeling that the answer is more than will actually be sold by a significant margin. It is true, at the very present moment that I record this, legacy automotive manufacturers are still selling ICE vehicles and making money on them. But we've reached a tipping point. 
Tesla is leading the charge in terms of EV cost. It's way cheaper to own and operate an EV today. It doesn't matter which EV you're talking about. And Tesla's vehicles are now close to price parity with comparable ICE vehicles. And their costs keep coming down. And per their master plan from 17 years ago, when the costs come down, the prices come down. What happens when the prices get cheaper than a comparable ICE vehicle? People stop buying ICE vehicles because they pollute. They're more expensive to own and operate, and now they're more expensive to buy, and they perform worse, and they're less safe. This is the thing I don't think Tony and many of the bears have quite figured out. There's a very short window of time where legacy automotive manufacturers can milk their ICE profits. But this window is a matter of years at most, maybe three, four years max. And those profits are going to decline every year between now and the total collapse. People aren't getting this. No one is getting this. Well, a few people are getting this. The people that sound completely bad insane right now with their EV adoption predictions. Make no mistake, more than 80% of all new vehicles sold on Earth in 2030 will be electric. Could be closer to 100%, but the 80% threshold is really the point where ICE is completely gone. It's totally irrelevant. We're on that S-curve now. People are not seeing how quick this is happening. It's just like people are suffering from small brain syndrome and they can't think outside the box. It's like, well, consumers are still buying ICE vehicles today and ICE vehicles are still profitable today. Therefore, the same thing will be true tomorrow and in five years and in 10 years and in 20 years. If the cost to produce EVs was not plummeting, this would be true. But the cost to produce EVs is plummeting with no end in sight. It is an economic inevitability, a commercial inevitability. Consumers who aren't absolute morons won't want to buy ICE vehicles within just a few years. Because why would you choose voluntarily to pay more for an inferior product? Imagine they were still selling BlackBerry phones today, but for $5,000. This is essentially what the dimwits who think that ICE vehicles are going to be around for years, potentially a decade or more to come, are thinking. The goose that lays a golden egg, the highly profitable ICE vehicle sales, are about to go away. At the same time they're going away, these companies won't be able to rely on the profits from these anymore. They need to come up with tens of billions of dollars to buy new equipment, build new factories, and learn how to produce EVs profitably at scale. And when the market realizes this, these companies, they attempt to raise capital, borrow money. Anyone with a brain assessing the risk of the fact that they may or may not pay this loan goes, oh, hang on a minute, uh, the ice sales collapsing, they could have spent a lot on EVs, I don't know if they're going to make it, better charge them a high interest rate just in case. At which point it becomes even more challenging for these companies to actually survive. It's kind of like some of these people, their brains are just frozen in time. And they can't see the change that's happening or the implications of that change in the future. What's even funnier is that Tony's suggesting that because of Tesla having competition in electric vehicles, there's going to be pressure on their prices. They're leading the charge. Tesla's dictating pricing in the entire EV industry. No one else outside of China is making any money on EVs and hardly any companies in China are making money selling EVs. So it's a nonsensical argument to suggest that Tesla's competition is going to cause pricing pressure on Tesla. It's the other way around. We heard recently Ford was losing 40% on their EVs sold. Tesla's margins are about 25% or so on gross order. Ford, negative 40%. Tesla can keep cutting prices of their vehicles and still make ridiculous profits. Ford is already losing 40%. If they cut prices following Tesla, they lose 45%, 50%. This really hurts my f***ing brain. Good thing I'm recharging it with my AG1. Unless you're credible in EVs, um, we don't want to give you any kind of valuation. And so I think you are going to see leading OEMs like the Volkswagens of the world, like Ford, like GM, uh, who have pretty robust cash flows from their legacy businesses, if they have to take down overall profitability to show that they can be viable in EVs, I think that's the choice they're going to make. So to summarize Tony's argument there, he's, <laughs> he's under the delusion and there's no other way to describe it. But legacy automotive companies will indefinitely be able to continue to milk the extremely high profits of their ICE vehicles and use those profits to subsidize losses on their EV business to compete with Tesla on costs. And in fact, maybe even outcompete Tesla with even lower priced electric vehicles. The key flaw in Tony's thesis here is the assumption that people will continue to buy ICE vehicles at the same volumes, therefore the same profits as today. This poor guy is in for a very rude awakening. Why does nobody understand this? Why do I keep having to repeat myself video after video after video? We're already seeing the collapse of ICE vehicle sales. Many automotive manufacturers are hiding behind the scamdemic and supply chain challenges. Eventually, they will begin to admit the truth, and I think Ford may in fact be one of the first companies to come out and say this publicly, because Jim Farley has some decent nuts on him. At some point, a company like Ford in a quarterly report to investors will say, we have been surprised at the slowdown in demand for our internal combustion engine vehicles, while simultaneously being equally surprised at the robust demand for our electric vehicles. We did not anticipate how quickly this transition would happen. We believe that we will sell less ICE vehicles in the future than we previously thought we would, but we also believe that there will be more EVs sold as long as we can produce them. 
If you can't read between the lines, our ice business is in trouble. Good thing we've started separately reporting financials so that we can spin off our EB business and let the ice business go bankrupt. Make no mistake, this is how things will play out. Tony can't see it. I can see it. Tony will be wrong. I will be right. And this video will still be on the internet for me to clip when it plays out. And why would I do that? For credibility, because right now, all the experts unanimously agree. The ice vehicles will be around for a long time. Tesla's in trouble. The competition's coming. On the other hand, there's a narrative, Tony, that Tesla's leading the pack on the price cuts and it's hurting the other automakers even worse than it's hurting Tesla, at, while at the same time they have some pretty ambitious plans to ramp up production in Mexico. They've got the first mover advantage and the deliveries today show that the price cuts are actually working. Yeah, I mean, look, I think price cuts in a hyper competitive industry is generally bad news for everyone. This is so hard to watch. I just feel so bad for Tony. I mean, he's doing his best. He's really trying. He just doesn't fucking get it. He seems to be completely oblivious to the fact that Tesla is continuing to drive their costs to produce vehicles down and that these cost declines, many of them are predictable. The cost decline of lithium ion batteries over time is predictable. It's also predictable that if you're building a new technology, electric vehicles at scale for the very first time, there's a lot of room for improvement. In terms of individual components going in an electric vehicle versus an ICE vehicle, it's no contest. There's so few things that need to go into electric vehicles. When you go down to the atoms, first principles thinking, it's obvious over the long term when the innovation in manufacturing has happened, and there's a lot still to go. We've seen Tesla literally leading the charge, the gigacasting, who else could have done that? Anyone, why didn't anybody? I don't know. Octave valve heat pump, deleting endless parts and processes. Literally, we see it invested today, 2023. Tesla's plan to halve, one more time, halve, the cost of a compelling electric vehicle. Yet Tony seems to be only focused on price cuts. Therefore, if prices come down, margins come down. Does he not understand that Tesla can, is, and continues to reduce the cost to produce their vehicles? I know I'm repeating myself, but f Tony. It's been on their website since 2017, and we've seen evidence of this over the last decade and a half. The performance of the original Tesla Roadster versus the price you paid was dog shit compared to what you can get today. The cost of the Model S and X has plummeted over time. We have a track record. Tesla tells us their plan 17 years ago. And then we have a 17 year history of them executing against that plan, continually driving their costs down, passing those cost savings on, introducing new lower cost, higher volume vehicles. Oh, God damn it, dude. Oh, man. Send help for this guy. We got to get Tony on AG1. Might fix his brain so he can actually think about this properly. Stop embarrassing himself. And again, I mean, he means well. He's trying hard. He just he just doesn't get it. So, you know, last year, Tesla's automotive gross margins were 27%. Uh, this year, I think uh, consensus thinks they're going to be 21, 21 and a half. And that, you know, and again, we think there could be incremental price cuts. So Tesla is certainly feeling the impact from its own price cuts. And, and certainly other vendors are. And, and that's the dynamic that we worry about is in a really competitive industry um, where price matters, uh, price cuts are detrimental to total industry profitability. And I, I think that's what we're starting to see and will continue to see. And that includes te Tesla and other incumbents. I'm suffering from secondhand embarrassment here. It really genuinely seems like in Tony's world, the possibility that a company, any company, but Tesla in this case, could actually make their products cheaper and therefore pass those cost savings on doesn't exist. It's like he thinks the cost to produce an electric vehicle is fixed and cannot change. And therefore the only way that you reduce prices is to suffer lower profit margins. Serious question. Do you think Tony's actually read Tesla's 2006 secret master plan? If this was a mature technology, like say the internal combustion engine vehicle, something that Tony may understand, his argument might make sense because there's no foreseeable way to meaningfully reduce the cost of this mature technology that's been manufactured at scale now for a century or more. You know, they, the, you know the good or bad news, I guess, if your other OEMs is they're pretty deep pocketed. Translation, these companies will continue to make enormous amounts of money selling their internal combustion engine vehicles for years to come. Therefore, they can continue to suffer enormous losses trying to compete with Tesla on vehicles that they can't produce even half as cheap as Tesla can. Therefore, everything's going to be fine. Oh, God. How do you get through to somebody who's so fixed in their thinking? Now, I don't know the answer to that question, but I do have a very strong suggestion for Tony and anyone else watching who has forgotten how to think or just avoids doing so because it hurts too much. It's possible that the reason you're unwilling to use your brain unless absolutely necessary is because you're simply not giving your body the fuel it needs, the resources, the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients, the feel and perform its best. If you're just getting by, of course you're not going to want to expend all that energy actually thinking, hang on a minute, what if the costs come down? So I get it. Tony, if you're watching, happy to sponsor your first one year on Athletic Greens AG1. 
I still cling on to a glimmer of hope for this poor guy. As everyone watching will know by now, I take Athletic Greens every day. Been doing so now for two years. I've never felt better. It really has helped me to feel and perform my best. And that includes actually using my brain rather than avoiding doing so because of the pain it might induce. It's kind of strange, but when you've got so much energy and vitality, doing things, including using this thing, no longer seem like hard work. At least in my experience, Athletic Greens AG1 is a great way to fill the nutritional gaps with 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, it has prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. I can't guarantee for sure that this might help Tony to break out of his limited thinking and actually see what's kind of obvious to others, but there's a 90 day money back guarantee. It's worth trying, right? Plus, if you head to athleticgreens.com slash SMR or use the link at the pinned comment, you get a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. It's a great way to start a simple daily health habit, one scoop once a day, every day, simple as that. And due to popular demand, you guys and girls have been asking for some more extremely legitimate, non-fictional testimonials that are absolutely real, and they're so real that you'll obviously be able to tell when you read them. Here are a few more super legit testimonials. Before I began taking AG1, I worked as a stock analyst covering the automotive industry and thought that the dinosaurs would make the asteroid go extinct. Within weeks of starting AG1, I realized that it was in fact the asteroid that would make the dinosaurs go extinct. Thanks AG1 for helping me see what was obvious to people with brains one quarter the size of mine for years. I'm now all in on Tesla stock and I can't believe how stupid I once was. From biggest brainest. Okay, interesting. Another one. 17 years ago, I read Tesla's secret master plan. Two weeks ago, I started AG1. Today, I think my brain came out of hibernation as I finally understand that it is possible for a company to reduce their cost to produce a product, pass those cost savings on to consumers, and sell more products. From Slow Learner. Geez, how did their parents know? And one more, this is a monster. Quote, six months ago, my wife downgraded me to a sell with a zero dollar price target because the competition is coming. Not for me, but on her. That must be a typo, I don't understand. At the time, I didn't understand what she meant, but one of her boyfriends felt bad for me and sponsored my first three months of AG1. I'm pleased to report that I've now been upgraded to a hold and she only sees other guys a few times a month now. She says we're making great progress, but since I still don't know how to lay pipe down, she has to maintain a diversified portfolio. At least it's progress. From Cuck Lives Matter. What a strange name. Bad jokes aside, I really do implore everyone watching to at least try Athletic Greens AG1. It's had a profound impact on my own life, especially in terms of energy. I used to get fatigued in the afternoon. I felt, I'm getting old. What is this shit? Turns out I wasn't getting old. I just wasn't giving my body everything it needed to feel and performance best. No more afternoon fatigue. I've got energy to burn, more physical activity, more work, you name it. Instead of running out of energy before I run out of day, I'm now running out of day before I run out of energy. A good problem to have. So head over to athleticgreens.com slash SMR or use the link in the pinned comment. Start your daily health habit now and let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks time. And don't forget, I just dropped a video on Patreon, how to 10x your income in 10 years or less. If you'd like to watch that, plus over 300 other exclusive videos, you can join Patreon with the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment, and I'll see you over there. Love ya.